Throughout this healing journey, there's these cycles of thoughts, feelings, memories, reoccurring things that make us feel like that person is haunting us or we are just not able to get over that person. Maybe we've had such a future plan that we were fixated on that it's so hard to let go of and it's so hard to think that this other person is no longer going to be a part of that future. Before you get down on yourself by feeling like you should be getting over this person quicker than you are, I want you to read this thing that I've been looking at quite often. And this is a little excerpt from a blog that's talking about a study that took place a few years ago on our thoughts. Now, a long time ago they did a study in 2005, like it says here, and it found that the average person has between 50 and 80,000 thoughts a day. But a few years ago, they did another study and they concluded that it's really only thoughts that are spiraling out of about 6,000 thought worms a day. Those thought worms are just basically rabbit holes that have other thoughts spiraling out of them. But this is what I want us to pay close attention to. When it talks about negative thoughts, most of these thoughts can be negative. And not only that, almost all of these thoughts are thoughts that happened previously. So if you're out there thinking, why can't I get over this person? Why does it feel like I'm being haunted by this person on a daily basis? It's a very natural thing. Most of our thoughts on a daily basis are thoughts that we've had yesterday or in previous days. So it only makes sense that one of the biggest life changes that we've had is on our mind. And so let's talk about the very end of this little excerpt. It says, it's a continuous cycle of thoughts that we get in. It's like a loop on a daily basis. But if we start really feeding into these negative thoughts and these thought worms, it'll result in just being a negative person. It'll result in being a pessimist and it'll result in letting those thoughts pretty much dictate our reality on a daily basis. I mean, this is stuff that can affect our personality. It can even affect our DNA. If we give these thoughts enough energy, eventually we'll just become them and we'll be that self-fulfilling negative prophecy. Now let's get into what we can do about this and how we can manage our healing journey to prevent the negativity from taking over. The last video I posted about my healing journey was around the six month mark. And I'm gonna put a little card up there in the corner for the playlist of all of my healing journey updates. Now around the six month mark, I was talking about blocks, forgiveness, and really trying to target things that I felt like were impeding my progress to heal. I won't go too in depth. You can check that video out to see what I was doing at around the six month mark. But what I do want to bring up from that last video is this same graphic of the healing spiral. And this is kind of what the healing journey looks like because it's just cycles and cycles and cycles of coping with our grief. At the nine month mark, I still come back to this because we're dealing with the same thing in a different way. I'm dealing with the same kind of grief that I was in the beginning, but the symptoms coming from it are a little bit different and the reasoning behind the grief is different. At this point in my grief cycle, I was struggling with having dreams. And if you're also out there with some traumatic dreams, just know that you're not alone and it is a normal thing. But how we deal with these dreams and how we let these dreams affect us on a daily basis, that's the real struggle, but it's also the real key 
to healing. I was really struggling for the past couple weeks because I was having some pretty intense dreams. And those dreams would lead me to wake up on the wrong side of the bed. And even when I'm meditating and trying to, you know, calm myself down, thoughts and emotions are still running rampant in these thought worms or these thought cycles. And at one point, I, I didn't really know what to do because what was working for me in the past was not necessarily working for me now. And this is a very key thing and probably the biggest takeaway for this video. Every stage of this healing journey is going to be different. So the things that have worked in the past might not work in the present, might not work in the future, but they could. So it's important to always have this mindset that things could change and we just need to adapt and figure out how we can manage and cope when these changes happen over time. The past couple months, the anxiety has been up and down, up and down really high because I'm putting together a new future for myself, I'm putting together a new identity for myself, but it's all very unknown. And my comfort zone, my ego, my sense of self as a person is being stretched out on a daily basis. And that's a big part of breakup recovery is becoming a different identity. You're a different person now because that other person and that other part of your life and your time that you were giving to that other person no longer exists. It's the same thing as recovering from an addiction. We have to take out the activity of using that substance and put in different activities, different things that we're going to do to manage our time. So my big breakthrough was in my morning and nighttime routines. At first, my morning routines were really about thinking about these dreams and, and focusing on these emotions and trying to understand what they were trying to tell me. What, what did I need to deal with? What was I not processing right. But when I asked myself these questions, all I got was more and more and more and more thoughts. And thoughts are not the thing that we want to focus on because thoughts can be never ending. So instead, I changed my morning routine to first waking up and just lying in bed still, eyes closed, just listening to my body and thinking about the dream I just had and if I was safe. And that was something I would repeat to myself, that I'm safe now, I'm at peace now. And after a few minutes of that, I would go into a guided meditation. But my guided meditation would have a completely different focus and a completely different energy than the past or the memories or the dreams. I went into a guided meditation on manifesting, the law of attraction, visualization, bringing my energy to me and my future. And after that guided meditation, after shifting gears to thinking about me, the rest of my day was completely different. I was not having thought spirals throughout the day about that other person, about other memories, about things like that. My daily thoughts then went from the things that I was trying to manifest, the things that I was trying to visualize. So if you're waking up with thoughts about that other person, sit with it for a little bit, but at a certain point, make that adjustment to say, okay, I'm gonna step away from this and move on to just thinking about me. The similar thing I was doing at night where I was really trying to get myself to calm down before I went to sleep, to detach from the phone, to detach from the computer, to read a book, you know, really get into putting my brain in a different place than it was throughout the day. And these two shifts really made a huge difference on the way I was sleeping, my dreams. And now throughout the day, I have a totally different set of thought worms. But the last thing I want to say here is to talk about grief a little bit, because that's been the focus of my therapy for the past few weeks, 
grief and also the kinds of grief that can affect us so deeply, especially as creative people, as sensitive people, empathetic people, or even people with, you know, PTSD or histories of trauma. Grieving that other person and grieving that relationship is going to affect us differently and probably on a deeper level. And so my therapist just introduced to me this idea that there's traumatic grief or complicated grief. And there's actually specific therapeutic tools for it that's called CGT, like complicated grief therapy. Now I haven't gotten too into what the tools are for CGT just yet, but one of the things that I was doing was writing these dreams down, getting them out of me, putting them in my head and onto a notebook, reading them, and saying, you know, that's enough. I can walk away from that dream as opposed to just having it in my head throughout the day. So these prolonged grief cycles, again, are totally normal. And as I come up with more techniques and more tools and learn more things from my therapist, things that are going to work for me, I'm definitely going to share them in the next update. And so the main three steps to my process right now is just being aware of my emotions and my thoughts and my memories, where they're coming from, accepting them, being okay with them, telling myself it's okay, telling myself I'm at peace and I'm safe, and then letting those things go. And finishing this book on uh, letting go has been instrumental in figuring out how to do this. So I'm going to put a link to where you can actually get this book in the comments. I'll also put a couple links to the articles that I was referencing that was helping me understand why I was having so many thoughts on a daily basis. And also I'm going to put up here the video that I just put out on the letting go technique. And over here, I'm gonna put the rest of my healing journey in this playlist. So if you dig this video, give me a comment, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see the next steps that are going to be in my healing journey, be sure to subscribe and also to see the other videos that I put out that will hopefully resonate with you as well. Thanks for watching and stay creative.